In the last video, I told you that rail is structured in such a way that it helps us to write dry code. Remember, dry stands for don't repeat yourself. In this video, I want us to take a closer look at MVC architecture that Rails uses. It's a fundamental aspect of Rails that's important to understand right from the start. So we have M, V and C, where the M basically stands for model, the V stands for view and the C stands for controller. The model will be denoted as active record. It refers to the data object that we use. It's the object-oriented approach to design which handles backend database and tables. V stands for view which is the presentation layer. It will also be denoted as action view. It's what the users see and interacts with essentially the web pages. The HTML, the CSS and the JavaScript are used by using this layer. Then C stands for controller. It will also denote as action controller. Basically, it processes and responds to user events such as clicking on links and submitting forms. The controller will make decisions based on the request and then controls what happens in response. It controls the interaction with our models and with our views. So let's take a look at a couple of diagrams that I think will make this more clear. First, let's take a look at basic web architecture. So this is an MVC, this is a non MVC architecture where you have a browser that interacts with the web pages. Of course, there is a web server sitting in between them, but this is a simplified view. This web page might have lots of code that makes decisions and finally outputs something back to the browser. And if the database enables, it can interact with the database, pull information out and then return that back to the browser. But the code to all of these things is in one page. On the other hand, the MVC architecture, it mainly breaks that single page up by a function. The browser communicates to the controller, which contains only the code involved in making decisions about what should happen based on that browser request. Then, if we need to interact with the database, the controller will talk to our model and our model will put all the code related to our data and to connecting to the database and then the model will return its results back to the controller. The controller can go back to the model if it needs and the model can actually go back to the database and so on. But finally, when the controller is ready to return a result to the browser, it will send its results to the view, the presentation layer, which contains the code related to what HTML, CSS and JavaScript should be returned back to the browser. So essentially, we've just taken that one single web page and broken it up based on its function into the controller, the model and the view. The controller handles decisions, the model handles the data and the view handles presentation. We may want to try and follow this architecture and keep our code in the right places.